Oh boy, it is time to go ahead and put this hydraulic clutch set up in. There it is. This is all that you have for the hydraulic clutch setup. Guys, this looks fairly simple. I'm not going to lie to you. Obviously, the transmission has to come off. And you have to pull your retainer off and install this. You can see this is where your hydraulic line is going to go in and out of on this bearing. This is actually going to move here, and that's what's going to push your clutch in and operate it. Here's your reservoir. Mount that basically anywhere that you want to. Here's your pedal. And just some hoses. That's it, guys. So this kit was sent to me from Handling Motorsports. So Andrew asked me, he was like, hey, would you be interested in a hydraulic clutch setup for the Retro Fox or any of your cars? Not necessarily. I said, but what you got in mind? He was like, well, I think this could really help some people out. He's like, if you're interested, I'll send you one. You can install it. It's yours. I think I will enjoy it, if I'm being honest. But I wish I could just snap my fingers and this thing, like, jump in the car and install itself because... <laughs> kind of dreading the install a little bit but i don't think this is going to be too bad either way guys i'm going to take you along for the ride what are the benefits of having a hydraulic clutch well for me obviously it's going to be a lot lighter pedal feel this is going to feel like a newer mustang or a newer car in general with a really light clutch pedal and the good thing about this is there's really no limit on the clutch it's not like it used to be back in the day uh, like i had an 88 trans am back in the day and you couldn't put a heavy-duty clutch in there because you would just wreck the slave cylinder. That's not the case in this. You can pretty much put whatever clutch you want to, and this thing's going to feel real nice and soft. Uh, also, I know a lot of you guys have, you know, maybe an issue with your knee or your leg in general, and it's just hard to push a clutch in. This may be the setup for you, okay? It's kind of late. I'm not going to bother starting on the car tonight. I'll come out here tomorrow. We'll rip this thing apart, and we will get started on the hydraulic clutch setup. Whew, wish me luck guys. I knew there was gonna be a little more to it. So we've got to do a lot of measurements and uh, I'm not a mathematician I can barely add and subtract so <laughs> I don't think it's gonna to be too bad, but we do have to do some measuring on the car so um, For as far as like depth and all that type of stuff. So we'll get all that done Yeah, so anyway with all that being said, I'm not gonna show you guys me taking the transmission out of the car There's no point in that um, so I'm just going to take my time on taking the transmission out, and then I'll show you guys what we got once I get the transmission out of the car. Sound like a deal? All right, deal. As you can see, we've got most everything out of the car. Now I'm trying to figure out exactly what I have to do to take all of my measurements. Guys, I'm going to try my best to simplify this for you guys, all right? So, this hydraulic setup is going to require you to make really three important measurements. Once you get your transmission out, you're going to be needing to look at this sheet. So, you're going to have to either download this sheet or hopefully it will be included uh, in the future, okay? But, you're going to have to take some measurements here. And I'm not the measurement kind of guy, but we have to do what we have to do. So, you're going to have to have a set of these. I think I picked these up from the auto parts store. Uh, Harbor Freight has uh, some similar to this as well. Just as long as it extends out the back like this one, okay? So you're going to have to take certain measurements. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you guys how to take these measurements. This is going to be the important part. Before we do all that, though, I'm going to go ahead and change this retainer out uh, and get the new one on, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and knock that out. You watching Gabby? Yeah. You like watching Gabby? Yes, I got candy. Oh, as far as I can tell, the clutch uh, and the flywheel is going to have to come off and be bolted back up together outside of the car to be able to get this next measurement. Okay, so that's going to have to come out just to be able to do this. You have to understand, you don't have it about a hundred thousandths plate in this whole system, so you need to get it right. So let me go ahead, pop this off, put the new one on, and we'll start taking measurements. As you can see, we have our new retainer on. There's four bolts here. And you're just going to replace one of those bolts with the stud that comes in the package and that's just so that this can ride back and forth on there okay that's all you're going to do okay and then you just line this up on the stud slide it back all right so we need this to be all the way back and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the depth from here on this outer bearing 
to the outside of our bell housing. As you can see, the shaft actually sticks out further than the bell housing does, so you're going to need something to go just below that. All you want to do is touch, and there's our number. Three inches, 918 thousandths. That's the back of the bearing right there. And then all you're doing is taking this measurement out to your bell housing. You can see the flat edge on, on the bell housing there. And then whatever that number is, you're going to put it right there. Okay. Then this, I'm about to show you guys how to do as well, and that's your crankshaft. So you need to go ahead and get that off the car, the clutch and all that, so I can show you how to do this. I've actually had it off one time, but I missed a step, so i got to pull it back off again. So I'll show you guys how to do that as well. The next thing you're going to want to do is bolt your pressure plate, your clutch, and your flywheel all together. Okay. And as you can see, this is going to lay flat on this table right here. That's what we want. Okay. We need a flat surface. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a measurement of these fingers from the fingers all the way down to the bottom of the flywheel. Now we know that the table is going to be the bottom of the flywheel because it's sitting flush on the table. So all we have to do is drop this thing down until it touches the table and we're good. But here's an issue. This is not flush all the way across. So you can't just lay something down here. Um, these fingers are actually a little lower than the outside of this. So what you're going to have to do is just find something small enough to lay in there like this. That'll give you a true measurement. We're going to zero everything out. We're going to drop this down until it touches the table. Boom. And then we're just going to subtract the thickness of this later. So this is our measurement. And since we went to the top of this, we don't have a choice now but to subtract to that if we want to be accurate. So about 122 thousandths is the thickness of this plate. So all we're going to do there is subtract 122 thousandths from that. So this is the number that we're going to transfer over to our sheet. And that's that number. And if you look at the diagram, I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory for the most part. There's your fingers. So that's where we lay the bar across right there in between that point. And then this is the back side of the flywheel right here. And we just dropped our measurement down through here. And the last one is your crank measurement. So let's go ahead and do that now. So our next measurement is gonna come from up here. Don't, don't judge me on this. This is just some extra security, okay? Since that block plate is so aggravating, we're not even gonna use that, guys. Just, we'll, we'll subtract the difference later. Let's do it this way. This is a better visual. Okay, that'll work. So 374,000. So let's go jot that number down, 0.374. Just gonna go ahead and get our measurement here. So that's the thickness. I'll call it 70. Once you get all of your numbers together, see as you can see that's dimension A, B, and C. You're gonna have to fill these in over here and then do your math which should be pretty simple. So I'll go ahead, do that off camera, and then we'll look and see what we got. All right, so I've got Madison in the house with me. Get somebody to do a peer check for you, okay? And just come in and make sure that your math is right, because this is pretty serious stuff. So this is where we're down to now. Um, we Our target is 150 thousandths. So originally we were right here and I'm just not comfortable with that number because my math could be off enough that we were actually a little less than 150 thousandths. That's a little too close for comfort here. I'm going to set the camera up. I'm going to go through all the measurements one more time for you guys and show you. And what we're doing here, so I guess let me explain something. Once we got this number right here, once we got this number, the only thing I started changing were these numbers at the bell housing because that's going to stay the same which is your crank and that's going to stay the same which is your clutch the only one that changed was over here on the transmission so with that being said though i'm going to go ahead and remeasure everything one more time she's going to jot down all of the numbers as i call them out three point eight eight seven Minus the 194. Yep. Okay, so we got our number, and then remember, guys, we got to come in whatever thickness that you used 
and you're going to have to use this, okay? And then subtract that number off of it. That's what she's doing now. 2.8833. There we go. So 1.2, uh, 1.261. Okay, so now with our shims in, I'm just going to put a flat edge up here. There's our number, whatever that is. 4.369. And that has to have that 900 subtracted off of it as well. So um, let us run through the numbers again. And what we're shooting for is I'd like to see somewhere around uh, 158, 160 something, somewhere in there. That way I can make sure that we're not too tight on this. I know, like, it, this is really close, guys. Really close. So she's going to write all the numbers down, and then I'll show you what we got. Please be a good number. Two, God. 215. Too much. Too much. I'm not going to bother to show anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to play with these numbers one more time, okay? And the only one we're going to change is this. The rest of these, there again, will stay static. We're just going to change this. So I'm going to get back to this. Let's see if we can get this number right. 186. There we go. I'm good with that number. That gives us a little bit of play from 150 to 200. I like that a lot. So that's what we're going with. Wow. Make sure you get these numbers right. If you look through here, this is our shim situation. Okay. So that's what it's going to look like for you back here. Um, what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and put our fittings on. just want to wrap these with Teflon. Okay. Got those. You're going to zoom in. I'm just going to move the camera closer. Oh, okay. And we don't want to go too tight on these, obviously. make sure they're snug okay cool I would suppose that this is going to go into the bottom which is going to be your pressure feed and then this one is going to be the drain since it's shorter or bleed off so no Teflon tape around this guys let's tighten this up mm. so I got a fun night ahead of me I've got to stay up Put the clutch, transmission, all that back in the car, and it's already like, what, 1030 at least, probably? Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, we got a late night tonight, guys, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and edit this video for you so that you can see the transmission side of the install. God, this thing is nasty. Stuff everywhere. <laughs> well, you know what? This is actually going to be pulled up, so, yeah, that's, that's cool. That's fine. I don't have an issue with that. I need to clean all this up because all right so that's going to be part one of this um sorry i hope that this wasn't too confusing i really want to help you guys out because if you're like me when it comes to numbers and things like that i get i get confused real easy okay um but there is a simple way to do it i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up though i'll catch up with you guys in the next video for part two where we do the pedal install and everything else next time you see this car all this stuff will be in place Madison, you move the camera too quick. I'm gonna let Madison close this one out. All right, you gotta do this, look. Uh, I know what you do, I just don't know if I wanna do it's it. It's easy, just look dead into the camera and pretend there's people That's on the, the other issue side. again. Right, you ready to go. <laughs> and as always, thanks for watching.